Hey everyone, so I think I've gathered enough tips to do another quick tips video, so that's what I'm going to be doing today. But first, I wanted to thank everyone for all the support that you've been giving my channel lately, and to do that, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. So I'll be running it from now until next month, so I'll draw for the winner on the 15th of July of 2020, and what I'm going to be giving away is an Avenger Titan standalone, or a game package with an Aurora LN. And you can always melt those too, so basically I'm just giving away $50 worth of store credit. So to enter, all you have to do is be subscribed to me and leave a comment, and at the end of the month I'll randomly choose a video and randomly choose a comment, and then that person will be the winner. You do have to make who you're subscribed to public though, so you can access that with the setting just so that I can see that you're subscribed to me. So thanks again for all your support, and good luck! Okay, so the first tip I have for this video is about a bug that I encounter pretty frequently. Now it's pretty minor, but sometimes I won't be able to turn on the flashlight that is on most helmets. So to fix this, just switch to another helmet where the flashlight is working, and with the flashlight on, switch back to the helmet with the broken flashlight. After that, it should be working again. If you don't have another helmet with a flashlight, then you can buy one pretty cheaply at almost every armor store. So. If you really want to fix it again, then that's what you're going to have to do. Alright, this is another tip about your helmet. So with the personal inner thought wheel that they added in this update, you can easily rebind things. And one thing that's useful to bind, I think, is taking your helmet off and putting it back on. So if you happen to leave your helmet off from drinking or eating or whatever the case may be, if you have the key bound, you're a lot more likely to be able to get your helmet back on in time. So as you can see here, I pressed it a little bit after leaving the enclosed area, and I was able to put it back on before I died. So if you're forgetful, this one might help save you. Alright, so this next tip is just something that you can do at the beginning of every game session, especially if you know you're going to be out for a while, like you're not going to be back to stations, and you're going to be out exploring in caves or doing whatever for a long period of time. So with the survival mechanic, you'll have to drink once every few hours, and especially if you haven't died since your last play session, you can spawn in with a lower hydration level. But if you have armor with a personal inventory capacity, you can just go and buy water bottles and keep them in your personal inventory. And as you can see here, they take up very little space. Also, to access your personal inventory very quickly, you can hit I, but it's also pretty easy to find in the personal inner thought menu. So I'd recommend doing this if you plan on doing caving, and especially if you plan on rescuing someone from prison, because they'll likely be close to dying based on hydration by the time you get to them. And they're so cheap it really doesn't hurt. Okay, this next one is another thing that you should do on every spawn if you know you're going to be engaging in combat, at least on the lawful side of things. So under the mercenary tab there's a mission called Call to Arms, and you want to accept this mission and then untrack it. And after you do that, any NPC you kill with a crime stat will give you a bonus amount of credits, depending on how high their crime stat was. So this is useful if you're taking bounties and you can kill the leftover ships for extra money or for missions like claim jumpers. So speaking of those who might not be on the legal side of the law, if you're looking to hack your crime stat away, I would not recommend doing it at Security Post Korea. As I've shown in some of my other videos, it's just too easy for someone who's going after your bounty to respawn and get back there before you've even had time to hack it away. So a good location is the security depot on Hurston. It's pretty hard to get to, and you get trespassing warnings if you get close to it, so it's a pretty good deterrent. A lot of bounty hunters tend to hang out in the Crusader area, so you're less likely to get interrupted here, and you'll probably be able to more easily get rid of your crime stat. Okay, this next one should just save you a little bit of time, especially if you're getting out of a bigger ship or one with a slow ramp. So if you're landing in an area that you know is going to be pretty safe, or you know no one else is there, you can just hit K and it'll open all of the hatches and doors and whatever on your ship. So especially in a ship like the Caterpillar, just having everything open so that I can run out as I'm leaving saves me just a few seconds. And over time that can add up. Just be careful doing this in more populated areas, because you might end up with some stowaways. Okay, this tip is just if you want to spice up the gameplay, if you've been doing the same missions over and over and you want to change things up a bit, then try checking out some of the ships that are available to rent. So you can rent ships currently at New Babbage, and these are more luxury focused rentals, and you can also rent things at Area 18 and Lorville, and these two locations have a good mix of ships. So here I rented an Anvil Arrow, it's a pretty cool light fighter with 
still enough firepower to take down pretty much any NPC mission in the game. And if you don't usually fly light fighters, it's a good change of pace and it's pretty fun to fly. And some of these rentals are pretty cheap, especially for the ships that you get. So it could be a fun thing to check out. Okay, so this next thing is another bug, and it might not apply to your ship, but if you have seen this thing and were wondering what it was, apparently it's the midpoint of your ship, and it's what the game uses to calculate where the middle of your ship is. I'm not sure if that's true, but that's what someone else told me. It's not supposed to be a physical component like this, but at least in my caterpillar, every single time I spawn it, it happens to be there. And if you look at the ship terminal here, I'm actually down to 560 SU worth of cargo because it's taking up physical space in my caterpillar. So that's like two titans worth of cargo that I'm losing just from this one thing. So a workaround for this is if you're trading somewhere where you can store your ship easily, then just store your ship before you fill it up with cargo. Because as you can see, when I store it, the cargo capacity goes back up to what it should be. But in a lot of places, this doesn't work. So as much as I like having this weird looking alien silverfish thing floating in my ship, I hope they remove it soon. Speaking of the next patch, something that's probably going to be a lot more important is VTOL mode. So you can press J to toggle VTOL. And on some ships, it doesn't really do anything because they might not have a VTOL mode or it's not very obvious. But for example, on the Prospector, it rotates the thrusters. So they just released some information about 3.10 saying that thrusters that aren't main maneuvering thrusters will start to overheat more in atmosphere and aerodynamics of your ship will be taken more into account. So VTOL mode will probably be something that you actually have to use in the future. Some other ships that I can think of that have this are, are the Valkyrie, all the constellations have the VTOL flaps, the Retaliator, and even the Cutlass. I'm sure there's more but those are just some of the ones that I can think of. Another thing that's going to be adjusted in 3.10, I believe, are the scanners. These are going to be adjusted to a lesser degree, but I wanted to take the time to explain them here because before I started mining with a prospector, I never even used it. So you can enter a scanning mode by pressing tab and that enables your passive scanners. So if you're in a ship that for whatever reason doesn't like to target other ships and you want to know what the ship is, like in my prospector, I can press one all I want and it won't target any ships for whatever reason. If you press tab, a lot of times your passive scanners will pick up another ship. It'll tell you what type of ship it is and it's actually pretty useful. It tells you that ship's health. I'm not aware of another way to be able to look at a ship's health. You can see what parts of it are damaged on the target select screen, but it doesn't really give you a indicator of its overall health. Unfortunately though, if you're trying to use this during combat, you can't shoot while you're in scanning mode. What you can do is right click and this will send out an active ping. You should know that when you do this, you send out those blue sparkle looking things to everyone else. So if you're trying to be hidden or discreet, you don't want to be sending out those pings because everyone else can see you, but it'll greatly increase the range at which you can see things. And if you want to directionally scan to increase your range even farther, you can scroll up or down with your mouse. And if you scroll up all the way, you see the circle move in and out and you can zoom in to a specific area to scan. So in 3.10 this feature will be even more useful because right now if you have a mining ship you can scan the surface for rocks but you can also sometimes find FPS mineables that you would normally only find in caves and using your ship scanner you can mark them to be able to mine on foot. So starting in 3.10 they say they're gonna allow all ships to do this so you could potentially bring even something like a light fighter and go surface mining for FPS mineables. Alright, so that's all I have for today. I hope you found at least one of these tips useful, and if you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and if you want to, you can comment and enter the giveaway. Thanks for watching.